All right. Hey, there we are. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna mute that. Okay, we're on, we're on Facebook Live. So um, Anita, anytime you'd like to start. Thank you, Anita. Good morning, Grace, and whoever is signing in now or in the future. My name is Kama Hamilton Morton, and I am the senior pastor at Grace United Methodist Church in South Denver. And uh, with us this morning, we, the leaders uh, of the service today, are actually broadcasting to you via Zoom but uh, so that you can see us a little bit closer. So we're experimenting as many churches are in this season with new ways to bring the grace and love of Jesus Christ to you. So it is uh, my privilege to be working not alongside physically, but alongside electronically with our accompanist musician, Anita Lockwood. You can want to give us a wave, Anita. <laughs> And uh, Associate Pastor and Youth Director, Reverend Mary McDonald, and our Music Director, uh, Greg Gibson, and Spouse Janice Gibson, who helps us with children's music, sings in the choir, does a lot around the church, and she's also a first grade teacher, so she knows how to read well to for, um, and to engage well for children's time. So we're so glad you're going to share with us today, Janice. So I invite us to start by taking a breath. Um, we are in a time that is moving forward. Some of you have been catching my evening devotionals and in that space, we are focusing on breathing and calming our, um, our bodies. And we know that breathing deeply is good for our blood pressure and other things. So I'm gonna, as we begin this day, if you have a candle, I have a, a little candle here. And this is from a candle that I got uh, 21 years ago from, uh, it says peace on it. That's backwards, isn't it? Uh, but it says peace. And my clergy woman friend, Sharla in Oklahoma, who's the pastor of Faith United Methodist in Tulsa, um, gifted this to me. We were at a preaching conference together in Nashville 21 years ago when I turned 30. Ha! And so I'm lighting a candle and remembering her. and. Um, so I invite us to pause and to take a couple of long, slow, deep breaths. And as we do in the evening, we're going to go inhale for a count of four and exhale for a count of four. So let's begin by trying that. Let's breathe in and breathe out and breathe in and breathe out. And every breath that we take, may we 
recall that the presence of the Holy Spirit that was present in the new breath of creation is in us and moves with us and through us um, in this time together. So I'm going to begin by trying something and that is to share a screen. And so with this, if you are on your Facebook Live, I don't know if it will show the screen on Facebook or not. So I'm gonna try to see, you're a few seconds behind us on Facebook. And so we'll see if the shared screen, oh, hey, there it comes up. Oh my gosh, that's awesome, okay. So what we're going to do, friends, is for those of you who are watching the screen, I invite you to move your this. Uh, if you go to, to the lower right, I believe, of your Facebook Live um, screen, you can click. There's a little icon with mine has two little arrows that says click to enlarge. And then from there on the bottom right, if you do it again, it says click to enter full screen. If you go into full screen mode, you're gonna be able to engage and interact with worship uh, with us this morning. And, and, uh, so we, and then after we're done, um, we wanna hear how it was for you. If you are signing in on Facebook, we would love for you to leave a comment with your name, with a hello, with any kind of greeting so that we know who is joining us, whether live during the 10 o'clock hour or later when you when you come on. And so we're going to begin by singing. And this is Morning Has Broken in our United Methodist hymnal. It's number 145. And um, this is one of the requested hymns and songs and uh, that we have been asking people to share with us some songs that they would like for us to sing. And so we invite you to get your can have your candle if you have that, and we're going to lift our voices together with Miss Anita and to sing Morning Has Broken. Morning has broken. Good morning, everyone. I invite you now to join me in our opening prayer. Gracious God, we want to feel the power and presence of your spirit. We desire to learn what and who you are calling us to be in your world. We call out to you that we might have the courage to give to you any burdens we carry today so that our hearts and minds can be open to you, to your word, and to your spirit, the same life-giving breath from the first of creation. Be with us and those on our hearts and minds as we gather this day. Amen. Good morning. I'm Janice Gibson, and I feel I have successfully unmuted my computer. And I, it is quite a joy to be with you today. And I realize I know that Jesus told us that there would come a time that we would worship in spirit. And I really feel that that is what's happening today. The Holy Spirit is what is keeping us connected today. And I'm quite blessed to be a part of this and to join with you for children's time. And I looked through the scriptures that Kama was going to share today. And there was one that stood out to me that I'd like to read. I know we're going to read it again, but it never hurts to hear things twice. Um, for It's from 1 Corinthians 12. 
For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. So that word individually is the one I want to focus on today, looking at ourselves and the special gifts that God has given us. So I want you to think for a moment, what is it that you do really well? What is it that you really love to do? What is that passion? Think about that for just a moment and share it with someone if you'd like. Those special gifts that God has given us are the things that help us to function on this earth and help us to help one another on earth. And I'd like to tell you a story about a trip that Greg and Leah and I took a couple of summers ago. We got in our truck and hooked on our trailer and traveled up to Northern Michigan and took a trip around Lake Superior, camping along the way, going into Canada. And it was a wonderful trip, uh, except for the times that it rained, of course, but we really enjoyed it. And what we discovered on this trip was that each of us had special little jobs that we just kind of fell into because of what we were really good at. So Leah was our activities director. And she seemed to, she'd look on her phone and she would find these incredible hikes that we would go on that had these wonderful waterfalls and lakes and things to look at. And she could find a spot for us to take a picnic in that was just, had this wonderful view. And so we always counted on her to know, hmm, what are we going to do today, Leah? What are we going to see? And she was happy to fulfill those duties for us. And Greg was our trusty chauffeur. He knew how to maneuver that truck anywhere we needed to go, backing the trailer into spots for camping, uh, driving through rainstorms or fog, whatever might be. He helped us arrive safely at every destination. And so we were so grateful for his expertise. And I was the food manager. I made sure that everyone had the food they needed. And if we needed a snack, I got out the snack bag. At dinner time, we had what we needed. We went to the grocery store. I had my list and I knew just what we needed. So we were able to stay nourished. And we, we chuckled about how our jobs were so important and how each of us felt so comfortable in the jobs that we were in. And truly, if we think about it, in this time, we are really seeing God use the many gifts that he has given us in so many ways. There are caregivers who are nurturing and helping to give care. There are wise decision makers who are helping know the right things to do in these situations. There are doctors and nurses who have the wisdom to know what each patient needs. And there are encouragers and helpers who are getting food to people who need it. And even within your own families, you might be feeling that, that you're fulfilling a role. Maybe you're the comedian who keeps everyone laughing when things are up in the air. Maybe you're the one who's encouraging and, and giving people what they need to hear at just the right time. Maybe you're the organizer. Or maybe you're finding yourself more alone in this situation, but realizing that you are reaching out to people in new ways. I was able to talk to my aunt, who's a 101 years old in Lawrence, Kansas. And in her nursing facility, she is pretty much just confined to her bedroom. She sees a nurse once a day and a physical therapist a couple of times a week. And that's about it. She has to have meals in her room. But she was telling me how grateful she is for her cell phone and that she's able to use it and that she can reach out to people through her phone. So God is using our special gifts in so many ways during this time as he does every day on this earth. 
And my prayer is that wherever you are finding yourself right now, that you may find the gift that God has given you and you may find a way to use it this week to bring the love and the comfort and the joy that our earth needs. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for making each one of us so special. Thank you for the gifts that you give to everyone. Show us how to give the best of ourselves to others and bless our world with your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Janice. Now I have um, three scriptures I'd like to share with you. And I'm not sure if they're going to show on the screen or not. But there is a part where, yeah, there we go. Thank you, Kama. Where you see where it's bold and it says all, I'd like you to join me in that line. From Matthew chapter 10, verse 42. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. From Corinthians 12, for just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. From Matthew chapter 25, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something, something to drink. drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was, I was naked, naked and, and you gave, gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in, I was prison, in prison and, and you, you visited, visited me. me. Here ends our reading. Thank you, Mary. Appreciate that. So this is the final Sunday of the Christian season called Lent. So people who are part of Christian communities around the world, uh, Catholic, Protestant, uh, a, a lot of church bodies, communities have been journeying with Jesus hearing stories and images around his path that will end up in his death. And so as Christians, we are invited to reflect on that in our own lives. And our theme this Lent, before the virus struck and we had to change the methods of how we're worshiping, has been the cup of our life. And the themes and images and metaphors of that have come from a book called The Cup of Our Life by Sister Joyce Rupp. I invite you to check it out. We've got a copy of the Church at Grace. Uh, and if you have questions, let me know. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a helpful book. And some of my reflections today will be uh, reflections taken from this chapter that Sister Joyce has. So I have my cup today. We had through the season, um, different cups. And this is my uh, Jeremiah cup, for I know the plans that I have for you. And again, this was also a gift from my pastor friend, Sharla. So um, she's with me in spirit today. We've had the beginning of the season, we talked in general about the our lives, the cup of our life. And then we heard, uh, we reflected on the open, the image of an open cup, and that if we are open, that we might be able to receive from God or from others wisdom and strength and for our lives and our journey. And then we had the chipped cup. Uh, the, or the cracked cup, the image of our lives when we feel chipped or cracked, not quite whole as we may have been before a circumstance or an event happens to us and how we can lean into each other and into God to gain strength. And last week, the image was the broken cup. And certainly, um, 
by then we were, there was just a handful of us in the front of the sanctuary last week. If you look back for that video on Facebook and we were worshiping with you all online and the virus was really beginning to pick up. And so that sense of brokenness and navigating through that is a very real thing. So today, the final theme of the series, which again was looked at and thought about and planned before all of this erupted, is the cup of compassion. And as I returned to it, a lot of it can speak to us in this moment with what we're experiencing, maybe our fears, our anxieties, and what um, some scriptures can speak to us, how Jesus can lead us, and how we can um, gain strength from each other. So Sister Joyce, the author of the book, shares this story. She says, one Thursday, when I was visiting at Kavanaugh House, in fact, I'm going to, for the moment, I'm going to do this. How's that? She says, one Thursday while I was visiting, visiting at Kavanaugh House, a residence for terminally ill persons, I met a woman named Agnes. She was sitting by the bedside of her husband, Al, who had a brain tumor. The next Thursday, I again found Agnes faithfully sitting there by Al. And this time she told me about Marion, a woman whose husband had died at Kavanaugh House the week before. Agnes only knew Marion from a few conversations they had before Marion's husband died. This new widow understood what Agnes was going through and wanted to support her. She began calling Agnes each evening to see how she was coping. Agnes told me how much those phone calls helped her to get through each day. And as the weeks unfolded, I saw how one woman in the midst of her own deep loss, reached out in compassion to another who was in pain. Marion couldn't do much for Agnes by changing her situation, but she helped greatly with her caring presence. Sister author and retired professor Mary Jo Meadows describes compassion as the quivering of the heart in response to another's suffering and says that compassionate beings cannot bear to see suffering and remain unchanged or unengaged. So think about that. I thought that was a powerful, that made me stop and think about relating to others. That a compassionate beings cannot bear to see suffering and remain unengaged. That compassion is the quality of being able to get inside the skin of another in order to respond with concern and care. And author Jack Cornfield writes about the truly loving person breathing in the pain of the world. Everybody take a breath in, breathing in the pain of the world and breathing out compassion. That is how deep compassion is and how closely it connects us with others. And as we look through the scriptures, there's probably no quality that identifies a follower of Jesus than compassion. Read through the gospels and you'll find that Jesus lived this quality. He encouraged it in those around him and in his disciples. He said that offering compassion to someone else was the same as extending it to him. Compassion. It can be hard to wrap our heads around, our hearts around, and it can be very demanding. It's not easy to know the pain and, or, and to feel or to imagine the hurt of another. Sometimes compassion asks us to do what Marion did for Agnes, and that is just to be with someone, to wait patiently, to experience their pain, their grief, their loss, their confusion, their uncertainty, the powerless they are feeling, just to be there alongside. And I think in this season, we may not be physically alongside everyone we would like to connect with, 
but that sense of a phone call, uh, a heart, heartfelt email, a card in the mail. Um, if you know somebody, could you, you know, asking, can you use some groceries, drop it off? We're, we're hearing stories, and my husband and I have done this to some friends who are quarantined right now, where you just, you go and pick up a couple things, take it to the door, drop it off, and then they open the door and pick it up. I mean, there, how are ways for us to be compassionate? So there's the being with someone, which may be um, that, that gentle side, but powerful side of empathy and, and being with. And compassion can ask us to do something, to do something active, to, to literally drop off groceries or medicine by somebody's door, to give our time and resources, to speak out for injustice, to go the extra mile for and with them as uh, that good Samaritan did in that famous story in Luke 15. Going beyond what is assumed or expected. And sometimes, so compassion can ask us to be with one another deeply or to do something perhaps particular. And sometimes compassion can mean getting outside of our ego and our pride and actually allowing someone else to do for us and to receive generously and graciously from another and to not be afraid to ask. How many of us would it do anything? What do we say when someone's going through a hard time? Let me know if you need anything. Let me know if you need anything. And we might mean it. And yet how hard is it to reverse that? And to actually say, you know, if it's convenient, here's a couple things. If you're out and about, here's a couple things I could use. Um, or if you've got a few minutes, I could just use somebody to, to visit with. Not, not to fix anything or solve anything, maybe just to be a sounding board, just to be a recipient of whatever you're feeling, your emotions venting, a safe place to vent. Everyone needs a safe place to vent. So how can we think of compassion as a being, so that supportive, as a doing? What are, what are those things we might actively do in this time? And how might we extend compassion by allowing someone in and to receive graciousness from someone else or a gift from someone else? Mary Jo Meadows points out, you must get near enough to suffering to feel it, but not so close as to get lost in it or overwhelmed in it. And I, I often use the language of not getting sucked in, that to be compassionate is to get close and walk alongside, but to keep your own sense of well-being so that you can continue to be helpful. And that can be a, a delicate balance for some of us, especially I've got people in my life that are highly sensitive and highly empathetic people. And boy, they pick up on the emotions and the what's going on of other people. And it can be a challenge to, for them to, to, to know that balance of when they can be helpful and compassion and when, uh, when to uh, have that balance of maintaining their own stuff. So it's not about all of us getting sucked in to the suffering, but it is how we, can, how we can support each other as we navigate down the path uh, alongside each other deeply. Biblical scholar Marcus Borg says that compassion is the central quality of God in both the Hebrew and the Christian scriptures. And he emphasizes that God is compassionate. God feels our pain our loss, our suffering. And so this season, as we continue to extend the concepts of being at home, staying at home, staying in place, may we draw inspiration and comfort from God who is our example of how to hold the hurting ones in our world, in our hearts, and offer them a cup of compassion through our prayers, through that empathetic being with each other, through doing something active, 
and receiving compassion. That scripture reading from um, 1 Corinthians 12 is from Paul's letter where he talks about the body, one, one body, many members, and that though we are different, and in this case, perhaps physically separated from one another, we are a part of one body called to live and to engage each other here and now. And each and every part of the whole has significance and worth. And Sister Joyce says, I find great strength in knowing that I am connected to everyone and everything in my world because of the God's presence dwelling in each of us. And because those atoms that twirl and whirl in every piece of creation. All of life, she says, is a part of me and I am a part of all of life. All people are my sisters and brothers, and in each one, I recognize the face of God looking back at me. The God of compassion has shown me a loving face. Now I am to be that reflection in return. I am to be that presence of God to another. When I offer compassion to someone, it is God in me reaching out to the other. That sense of interconnectedness is profound in this season where we may find ourselves physically separate from each other. John Cardinal Newman has a prayer that um, I'd like to adapt and share. So if you want to take a breath as we um, think about these scriptures and think about this uh, sense of the cup of our lives, one of those images of the cup being this cup of compassion. He says, dear God, help me to spread your love everywhere I go. Come into me so fully that all my life will reflect your compassion. Shine through me and be so in me that every person I meet will feel your presence in my spirit. May I see you in others and may others see you in me. Sisters and brothers, friends near and far away in this season that will continue to unfold in the coming weeks and perhaps months, May we extend ourselves, may we tend to ourselves gently, giving ourselves periods of rest, contemplation, reflection, as well as periods of action, connection uh, to others through phone or computer, exploring new ways to be that cup of compassion to those around us. May we be intentional about giving and receiving compassion. May we offer cups of cold water through our words, our actions, and may we be open to receive compassion from others. In so doing, we may be the face and the hands of our compassionate God as we strive to follow Jesus this week and to minister one to another. God's peace and blessing to us. I invite us now to move to a time of prayer. Oh, giving that deep breath. There we go. Will you take a breath and pray with me? Oh God, we are a people who need you in your fullness. We need you as the creator God, as the redeeming Christ and as the sustaining spirit. Our lives have been complicated by the pace and scope of this disease, but remind us that we are made in your image 
and the wind of your spirit was breathed into us that we might experience hope in your goodness, even in the midst of life's difficulties. There are situations that make it hard to be aware of that goodness. And on this day, we pray now for those whose lives have been or will be affected by the disease of the impacted by the coronavirus. God, we pray for all of those that are leading and trying to be responsible and respectful. And we pray when political battles bring out pettiness over issues that are really too important for bickering. God, we pray when our hearts ache, hurt by the illness or loss of loved ones, friends, neighbors, or strangers. When we are exhausted emotionally from illnesses, or tending to our own families at home. When we are overwhelmed by loneliness and isolation, help us to know that you are with us and that we are not alone. God of us all, help us to open ourselves up to you as compassionate beings that we may extend you to each other. May we find opportunities to be those hands and feet of Jesus to those in our neighborhood and community. And may we find your love and strength grounding us day to day. Amen. This time I invite us to pause and to listen to a gift of music. All right, this is a version of uh, the Lord's Prayer that I wrote uh, on February 14, 1996, so I hope you enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Greg, for that beautiful rendition. We, as a congregation, are, <coughs> excuse me, in a season of thinking differently and experimenting with how to be in ministry with each other. 
And yet we know that the expenses and the day-to-day -day of being a church and being an active missional presence in our neighborhood and community goes on. And so as I share a couple of things, I invite you to consider if um, you have a pledge to turn in or a tithe to turn in, you can mail that to the church, uh, 4905 East Yale. Uh, or as of yesterday, we have, I believe I tested it out and it worked, uh, a working button on our website, graceforDenver.org. If you go to our website on the top right, there's a button that says online giving. And if you click that, it'll take some information and um, it will allow you to give uh, freely. And once I believe once your information's in, then you won't have to do that every time if you if you want to do it again in the future. So we appreciate your support. It is a challenge uh, as a congregation. We are committed. We have talented staff that is continuing to work in new and creative ways. Uh, with our kids, with adults, with youth, and as we reach out in worship and in mission. Um, so those kind of day-to-day -day things continue, though we are uh, projecting ourselves differently. So I invite you, as you are able, to consider how you can support the ongoing life of grace at this time. We do have some things coming up, and uh, if you are on watching this on Facebook and have not yet gotten comfortable with Zoom, I invite you to, to let me know as we are trying to get as many of our congregation connected to Zoom. It's free. It's uh, becoming a wonderful way to group people together. Our book club, by the way, our Grace Book Club, which meets once a month, is going to meet, I think April 19th is what I heard, but and watch for more information on that, but we're going to meet via Zoom. And so we'll be sending out, reminding people about the book. And it's a great book club because even if you haven't read the book, you can come and listen and just be a part of a really great conversation with, with a wonderful small group, uh, a group of people. So we invite you, whether you're a longtime uh, participant in our book club or brand new and just curious about it, we'll get some information about that on our church um, Facebook page and website. Uh, we also have, we sent, we have a weekly email that goes out at least once a week. The regular time is toward the end of the week called Grace Notes. And in that, we uh, share things that are coming up, things to be aware of. Um, and the Grace Notes that went out yesterday, I'm going to try to get back on the Friday uh, trip. So I'm sorry, it was a little later yesterday. But we have two outreach and mission opportunities for you. So please check your email. If you have not been receiving the grace notes, if you think you should be, check your junk mail. I just did that this morning and actually the grace notes was going to my junk mail on my new pastor email. So check it. And if you are not receiving it and would like to send me a message, uh, you can email me or text me or Facebook message me and say, hey, can you add me to the grace notes email? We'll be glad to do that. It's been a great way to just be in touch with things that are coming up. We've got Reverend Mary working and connecting with our youth and their families. Uh, our education Jan, director Jan Constance has been working on a mailing that actually may go farther than the kids and the families of her Sunday school and may come to all of us as we think about ways to get ready for Palm Sunday and Holy Week. And so watch for that in the mail. Again, if you're not currently connected to Grace, if you're in the Denver area and would like to be, let us know and we'll be glad to, to be connecting you. So it is an interesting time. You know, we've, we talk about the church not being about the building and we're still exploring and growing what that means and how we can be active in the community. So take a look at, at those mission opportunities. Um, with the Network Coffee House and the After Hours Ministry, Homeless Ministry, and let me know if you have any questions there. And so as we celebrate how we are called to be the church and how we will be able to be the church in new ways, um, we do lift up those who are hurting. I do have a prayer to share with the community today with permission. And that is we have a couple in the church, Ron and Eunice Haroldson. And Ron just turned, last week, just turned 82 years old, beloved members of the church. And on his 82nd birthday, 
Ron received a confirmed diagnosis of COVID-19. So he is our first uh, parishioner in, in our membership who that I'm aware of that has received that. They have been very open about it. The blessing as far as the congregation goes is that they had not been in, the last time they were in the church was March 12th. And since then the church has been completely sanitized. Nathan has been taking that very seriously. And again, we're very blessed to have such um, good staff folks that are taking care of us. So uh, our prayers for Ron, he is, uh, I've been talking to Eunice daily and as I have some of you, and the last word I had is that they had the intention of moving him to ICU. And this can be a good thing because apparently Ron is one of those people now that he and I are on the opposite end of the spectrum. When I go in to give blood, boy, they just love me because my veins are just popping out and I'm easy to give blood. But there are a lot of people that that's not the case. And Ron struggles, apparently struggles with that with his veins normally, let alone when he's sick or a little dehydrated. So they've had trouble with that. So they're going to take him, they were going to take him to the ICU yesterday at Aurora South and uh, so that they could get a pick line in him, which will allow his body to receive the, uh, the, the stuff that he needs to strengthen him. And that will also make it easier to up the levels of oxygen again, to strengthen his lungs as he is moving through. Um, hopefully we are praying and hoping that this will be something that he can move through. And um, so our prayers with Eunice and the family, they, we are grateful. They have uh, their son, uh, Mike and, um, and his wife who are in the area and helping to connect as well. But, um, Eunice has been talking an awful lot and her voice was getting scratchy. So I know a lot of you would like to reach out. Text her, she's great at texting. So if you want to text, um, send and, or send a message, send a card, card in the mail, that would be lovely at this time. So our prayers, deep prayers with them. Uh, also for any of us that have people in the healthcare industry and just talking and hearing of their challenges at this time. So as we take a deep breath, whew, you know, that's the thing. This is a respiratory illness. And so every breath that we take is, um, is, is a reminder that not to take that for granted and to pray for those who are struggling in the midst of this season. We're going to go forth singing another familiar, maybe a familiar song to you. And in our, in our United Methodist hymnal, it's number 526. Um, and it is what a friend we have in Jesus. And I'm going to invite us to sing all three verses. Let me get back to sharing because all three verses, um, they just, I thought they spoke to kind of what we're going through today and in this time. So I invite you to lift your voices and to listen. We'll have Miss Anita accompanying us as we sing together. What a friend we have in Jesus.
covered mm. with hair. Precious Savior, still on Thank you, Anita, uh, Greg, Janice, uh, Reverend Mary, for this experimental week as we continue to explore with the technology we have or may get uh, how to share worship, a time of worship with all of you. As we go forth, I would just remind you that I have been recording some evening devotions, uh, many evenings. I'm kind of gearing for Monday through Friday and then uh, Sunday evenings I'm doing eight o'clock Sunday evenings I am sharing some meditation including some Tze prayer the Tze is a particular method of, of prayer and it incorporates kind of a meditation calming meditational chanting music um, that that's repetitive and just very very nice and scripture, prayer, and some silence. And so to both end and maybe begin your week, I invite you to get on Facebook Live um, tonight. I am doing that. Um, I, will, I will do that from my page and then we'll immediately share it to the church page and our new YouTube page. So I invite you to find me, Kama Hamilton Morton on Facebook and uh, to share that. And then in the coming evenings, as I'm able, seven to eight-ish, 7.30 to eight-ish, I've been getting on and sharing some brief reflections and just, again, a way to breathe deep and end the day together. So I appreciate those of you that have signed on and commented. We do want to get the word out too. Not everybody has Facebook. And so we have a new YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube, look up Denver Grace UMC, and we'd love for you to subscribe to it and to share it. And I am uploading all of the videos of the evening devotionals and of worship and things that we're doing to the YouTube page as well. So anyone can be connected in that way. Uh, we do invite you to like this page, the Denver Grace UMC Facebook page, as we continue to grow our ministry into the community and beyond. And so, friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you deep, compassionate peace that we may go into the world to be that compassionate face of Christ for others, to be a healing presence, whether that means extending uh, patience and forbearance in this time when many are anxious, whether it means uh, being a non-anxious presence alongside a friend who is struggling, or whether it means dropping off some items that can be shared in outreach this week to those who are hungering uh, literally in their bodies. So let us go forth, be in touch, and um, to our Grace congregation, we remind you that Tuesday night at 7, we'll have our All Grace Gather Zoom for anybody who wants to join us on Zoom to check in with each other as well. The Lord bless you and keep you. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you back again next week. God's peace. Bye-bye.